What's up, Jump Steady? How you doing on this fine day? I'm doing great, thank you. How good. You? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I wish there was some snow on the ground, but it's coming soon, I hear. Uh, it's all about the end of the world, you know. <laughs> the ozone layer is depleting, and uh, and then, I swear to God, I watched an ancient alien. Um, if the 21st doesn't get to us first, right, then. right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, considering all that, we're doing okay. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I'm I'm super glad you're back here at Psychopathic. Um, oh, I was you. here um, a little bit when you were here before. Oh, yeah. And you always brought a lot of karma and I, oh. good ideas, and I just really want to talk about um, your reasons for leaving Psychopathic in the first place. It's kind of like a long story, but uh, basically uh, I was working for Psychopathic for about 13 years, and uh, it was going great, fucking loved it, you know, loved all the juggalos, and lo loved the karma that I got for providing entertainment for the family and everything, which I always uh, was always like my main motivation for uh, working at the label. Yes. And then uh, it, that all came down to uh, Psychopathic Europe, which was the sister company that we decided uh, to start up. It was really Alex's kind of idea from the beginning. Uh, it was his vision to start up a sister company over in Europe and start getting things running over there. Some of the lows and lets might not <clears throat> be aware that that, that was um, something that happened in the past, Psychopathic Europe. Yeah. So, uh, you know, basically, you know, we had uh, juggalos, you know, were, were kind of like, uh, there was a lot of juggalos over there in Europe, and it was kind of setting off over there and a little, you know, not, not as big as it was in America. And that was right after the European and Australian tour? Yeah. 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 So it started getting things stirring over there. Yeah. So anyway, so I went over there. Uh, well, actually, so, sorry, I didn't go over there. The, initially, there was another guy that worked here at Psychopathic. Uh, that was going to head up over there, and you know, uh, you know, Alex initially approached me with the idea of like heading up Psychopathic Europe, you know, to, yeah. and, and I told him no because I, I didn't want to be away from my family, you know, my daughter, my wife for that long a time because it was basically you had to commit to a year to go over there. Right. So, uh, so he, you know, basically he uh, he he approached me and I told him no. So he got this other guy that worked at the label at the time. I'm not going to mention his name, you know. Okay. Uh, but anyway, he he was putting it all together. He spent a year getting everything from the European employees to the warehouse to the car to an apartment uh, distribution you know he spent a whole year getting everything together before he finally went over there so then he went over there and basically we found out he only lasted one day over there oh because God. we found out that he was a crackhead. <laughs> so, Dang! Yeah. And when he got like off a the, straight up drug addict? Yeah, straight up drug addict. When he got wow. off the plane, the first thing he asked uh, you know, the European employees over there was where he could get his drugs, you know, and they were kind of shocked, like, whoa, what's going on with that? You know? Right. <laughs> like, it's you supposed know, to be professional. Right, you know, and he's like he's all he's asking them about is like, you know, where he can get these drugs at, right? Which the drugs he was addicted to. So they were like, man, we don't know. We're not, we're not crackheads. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> they were like, uh, "Who did they just send over?" Right, you know. So the guy basically came straight back because he couldn't get his his drug fix. Okay. So then Alex came to me and he was like, "Man, we got to send you over there. You're the only one qualified, remotely qualified, right. to go over there." So I was like, "All right, you know, I'll do it. You know, because you know, all this time and money has already been sunk into the project. They didn't have anybody else. So I was like, "All right, I'll go over there." So went over there started running Psychopathic Europe. Now, the only ones helping me were Paul and Steve at the time. They were like the main guys working over there. They were European juggalos, mad fresh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some people might know uh, Paul's ATF, uh, you know. Yep. Uh, so anyway, uh, we started running things over there and at first it was okay, but then it became very stressful because you're talking about running a company from the ground up in a foreign country. Right. You know what I'm and you're so. the only one from America <laughs> right. psychopathic there. So, uh, and then to make matters worse, uh, Alex, uh, you know, at first he was a little supportive, but then he became, it got to a point where he wasn't supportive at all, you know. And now Alex is a really good friend of mine. Uh, and, and as far as I'm concerned, he always will be. I know there's a lot of allegations against him and speculation. There's a whole book on that, but that's right. really another story. Oh, good to that later. But it's nice to hear that you guys are on good terms. Right, but in this in this he case, he was a part of psychopathic for a long time. In, right, and and you know we grew up together and stuff. Right. But anyway, in this case, he was he was kind of whack because he wasn't sending over enough money to keep it running. And he also wasn't really returning a lot of my calls because I constantly had to, to bother him for advice right. on what I should be doing. And, you know, uh, because I was really in over my head, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll admit to that. But, <clears throat> you know, at, at one point, 
it got so bad at one point that I had to borrow money from my own employees just so I could eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I would be waiting on like money being sent over for sometimes like a month. Right. You know? And we were trying just, to... It sounds like you just weren't the priority. No. And, and you know, it's understandable because everybody in America is so busy, you know, just running the label over here. Mm -hmm. So in, in one sense, I got it. But in another sense, I didn't. Well, personally, you know? I'm sure you felt... You know. Yeah, and it wasn't really my idea to begin with, so it was it was just really stressful yeah. because I'm trying to run this co company in a foreign country with no money, you know, yeah. and no support, you know. So did that kind so of the only the only ones that supported it really uh, was my brother Joe. Like he was super supportive all the time. In fact, he came over and spent like yeah. three weeks over there. Um, and there was a couple other ninjas like Tom. Uh, the, we call him Tom too over here. He still yep. works here. Tom Lumber. Yeah, he came Worked over down. and helped out for a couple weeks. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so th so there were some ninjas that were supportive, uh, but there was also a lot of ninjas that I was dealing at the office at the time that weren't, and none of those people work here anymore. So yeah, <laughs> it's not, telling. No, it sounds problem, like not know. only your your karma was <clears throat> dwindling, but on a personal level, it was mm. taking a personal toll on you. Yeah. So in the end, uh, you know, I basically cracked. Like, yeah. uh, like an egg, you know? I mean... You are just done. The pressure was so great, you know? And, and I was talking to Alex about it, and I was like, look, you know, this is kind of like your vision to begin with. You're not sending enough money to keep this thing running. You're not supporting me or even taking most of my calls, you know, when, when I need advice or help, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, I, I was like, you, you got to make the call on this thing because, you know, and it was a big money pit, you know? Psychopathic Europe never really took off, you know? And I told them that, you know, in order for it to take off correctly it would probably be about an, a couple of years of work right and it'll be a money pit that whole time you know what I mean because you got it like any other business right exactly it takes money time effort and money into yeah it, it takes money to make money so you, right. you'd have to we'd have to put like you know we'd have to continue promoting putting on shows uh, you know doing everything to to get it up to where it is over here in the states and I and told that them just wasn't happening I told them it's very possible you know what I mean like because mm -hmm. we were putting on events like we, we had our uh, uh, psychopathic uh, New Year's party that mm -hmm. went over extremely well. There was a lot of juggles came from all over the place to come to that, you know. Yep. And and they were hype, man. They were super hype. Like you know, you could see it. It was like yeah. it was like ready to pop off, you know. Yeah. But I told him I said it's gonna be like a money pit for another couple of years before it gets to where it needs to be. So I was like, what do you you know? You really got to make the call, you know. And so he decided to pull the plug on the whole thing, you know. And and that's so, when I came back. So you know? when you came back, you were still <laughs> working for a psychopath here yeah but you were just I was pretty drained physically at that point. drained emotionally and, and, and drained mentally cracked like an egg like I said so yeah you know I came back and it was kind of like there was some of the people at the office at the time where I, I, I just had a problem with like people that personally you know weren't taking my calls or you know stuff like that I wasn't given 100% anymore and I had too much love for my brother and even Alex, you know, and for the juggalos to be working in the position without giving it at least 100% exactly. effort. Exactly, you know? and I will say that all of this you know? did happen well before Alex ended up leaving Psychopathics. Yeah, he was still there and yeah. stuff. So, uh, you know, I basically got everybody together and I told him, I said, man, I, you know, I'm going to have to take a step back. That was a know? sad, sad day. Yeah, it was. It was a sad day, believe <laughs> me, for me. It was a sad day. For me especially, you know. So, so that's when I left, you know. Okay. And the whole time I've been gone, like, i still been been doing work for psychopathic like mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of the written work you know the stuff that appears in the albums covers you yep. know I Joe, know you wrote intros for the yeah. past two cards oh yeah like Joe, Joe would call me up and he'd be like man we need this intro you know yep. he, you know he, he'd want to keep that same the formula for the magic going right. you know what I'm saying so right. and I was always down to help out you know and you know and I've always been there like doing kind of like work on the side you know yeah uh, because and, I've always had love besides for psychopathic, that you were out saving you know? lives legitimately saving yeah lives. I went on to be an EMT you know <laughs> like was, for real saving right. lives of and, course <laughs> yeah and, and I love the job you know it was yeah. kind of like similar to what I was doing here like I always got a lot of karma working at psychopathic because I was providing entertainment for others is how I looked at it mm -hmm. so it was always like awesome you know, like at the end of the day, I felt so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the, the and, and then when I became EMT, it was similar. You know, I'm helping people, I'm saving lives. You know, I'm doing that on a daily it was basis. It's fulfilling. So it's very fulfilling. You know, and I think that's part of my character is I always have to do stuff for others. You know I what agree. I mean? Like, and, uh, and in order for me to feel, um, you know, a, a worth or feel satisfied or whatever, you know, that's, feel that karma. You know, I completely that understand. Karma.
So with all that said, do you have, was there something that happened that actually made you just want to come back to Psychopathic or was it a series of events? What made you want to return to Psychopathic? To me, what really, it even goes further back than that. What really got me was uh, when we did Big Money Rustlers, okay? okay. So we did big, the movie Big Money Rustlers, yes. which was always my vision yes. from way back. I mean, it was Joe's idea initially, uh -huh. but I was so supporting that idea. Like, we got to do Big Money Rustlers, you know? We have to do it, you know? It was like, I, was, I was really hyped on it. If uh, and, and this is like really old school, so like, I don't know if uh, some of the newer juggalo, Juggalos might not even know what I'm talking about, but uh, in Bizarre Bizarre, there's like a, there's a hidden pictures, and if yeah. you look in the, in, in the, uh, the, pick up the disc tray, Mm -hmm. Inside there, the there's hidden pictures that show Hack Benjamin, and also uh, it shows uh, uh, Jamie and Paul, you know, twisted on there in some like Western style pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. And those are my idea. I was like, Joe, we gotta, you know, we gotta hype up this big money rustlers. I was trying to keep the the ball rolling on that, yeah. you know. So when the reason we didn't do big money rustlers for so long is because the movies never really made us money. They, you know, they're, they're like a million plus dollars to make. Oh, yeah. And so the movies were one of those things that we always do not to make money just to do it for the love like you know to put out the flavor for the yeah. family and stuff like that there's a lot of things we do like that over here like the radio is another one yeah where we kind of just do it it's not a, it's never been a money maker in fact the radio kind of lost money the whole we'll time get thing. into the radio <laughs> But Let's get into that. There's a in lot a of stuff that we do that we just do for love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to put it out there for flavor. So, did you, know? you miss that? But anyway. Is that the want in you coming back? No, no, no. Like well, Big Money Rustlers, when I came down, when it, when Joe called me up and was like, we're doing it, you know, I was like, that's awesome. Like, yeah. I was like, that, you know, I've been waiting on that for so long, just like all the juggalos, you know, we've been waiting on that for so long. Yeah. It was like, all right, great, man, let's do this. So, I went down there and I was a part of that, like the whole filming thing, kicking ideas the whole time. And, you know, I really, I really love that. And I know that. That role, Joe you know. wanted you to do that. Yeah, he wanted That's me to do that. You know, he you. wanted me to do Not the same thing. Not only are you Hack Benjamin, right. you and are a behind-the-scenes producer. And, right, and just being and there director. with the whole family again, like being there with everybody and just like, you know, working with Joe and Joey again, doing all that stuff. Awesome, man. It was just so karmically satisfying for me that I was just like, this is great. You know what I'm saying? This is just like old times. It was like I'd never even left, you know? Mm -hmm. So then we, we did the movie Big Money Rustlers, which was awesome in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> so course. then the movie itself was awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, then we went and did the, uh, the movie premiere. Okay, in in, uh, in Detroit, mm -hmm. and so you know we we put it up on the big screen, and you know everybody came out to yeah. watch the movie for the first time, and we we all came out on stage one at a time, mm -hmm. you know. And I was a little nervous about it because I was like, I didn't really know at that time I had been gone for so long, I didn't know what kind of reaction that I was gonna get from the jugglers. But when I came out on stage, it just it just popped, you know, when I came out on stage, like it just popped, like yeah. the whole crowd would just went yeah, crazy, you know, like, yeah. oh, you know, and, and it occurred to me at that time that the family, like no matter what anybody else says, the family was real, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because you don't forget a fucking family member, you right. know, and I felt so embraced that I felt like you know, I was never forgotten. Not only was I never forgotten, I was missed. Because that pop was so fucking loud, mm -hmm. you know. They were like, man, they went crazy. Like, after we got off stage, Joe was like, man, they fucking went nuts. When you came out there, you hear that <laughs> shit. I was like, hell yeah, man, that's great, you know. That's awesome. So, it was just a, a, a overwhelming feeling of love. And to see Big Money Rustlers, like, actually, you know, film and, and brought yep. to light was mm -hmm. just awesome to me. And <clears throat> karmically, I was just taken back, you know, so. Cool. So, anyway, so that was kind of like the beginning. That was like the beginning, you right. To step back in. Right, that was the beginning of it. And then I did the last two gatherings. And mm -hmm. it was the same thing. Like, I hosted the stage two years ago, and I hosted the stage at the last gathering. And coming out on stage and, like, talking to everybody. And I have to say, you had to you give know. some pretty bad news this past year. Oh, yeah. And you did it like a pro. <laughs> right, I was yeah. like, how was he going to get up there yeah. and tell these yeah, I had the, to, the whole family that we're missing yeah. an artist, and you just did the damn thing, and we right. were all like, "Dang!" 
I had to go out matter. there, yeah, because I had to go out there and, and mention that the game wasn't showing yeah. up, and go out there and mention DMX wasn't showing up, like mm. back to back, you know. Yeah. And I was like, man, uh, you know, fucking, I'm gonna get killed out there. I but, know we were all like, he's gonna get it. They're gonna right. be so mad. But, but no, you I just, just talked to everybody. Yeah, yeah, and you just explain like, it. You, it was one on one, and, and I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna say everybody was cool with it, but they were like, all right, you know, what I'm saying like yeah. shit happens or whatever. I, I felt like in the end, you everybody, gave it to him nice and light. Everybody understood, and it, and it wasn't on us. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. uh, on our on our side, everything was set up. They right. they said they were gonna be it there, and they just assholes. didn't show. Whatever. Everyone you know. knows that. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, the gatherings were were super love. You know, the gatherings, the same thing. Just being with everybody, walking around, talking to the juggalos and stuff, and mm -hmm. being with the, you know the whole psychopathic family and all the artists, Blaze, ABK, seeing everybody twisted again. It was just awesome. You know, yeah. it was just like. You know, this is just awesome. You know, this is great. You know, mm -hmm. so I started. You know, I've been like it took me about two years to the, really decide to come back, but I felt like my karma was totally rejuvenated. You know, rejuvenated. It was where it was at before, and I felt like that. Um, you know, the love had never left, and you know, every time I came back and did a psychopathic event, it felt like I never left. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I finally decided that yeah, you know, like I talked to Joe, you know. And, uh, you know, we went out to eat and I was just telling him my ideas and, you know, Joe had always been trying to get me to come back, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. He was like, man, you're so needed as psychopathic. Not know? only him, everybody as psychopathic, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, but Joe was the m one I was mostly talking to and so yeah. he was like, yeah, man, you know, he was like, when I when I kicked the idea, he was just like, oh, man, that's so great, you know what I mean? He's like, and he told me, he said, I, right, he told, well, he told me he felt like, we sh together we should always been doing this you yeah. know like we started it from the beginning like I was there from the very beginning you know so he was like man I felt like we should always in life this was like what we were meant to do then we should always be doing this together like working on this together you know right. so so I was like cool you know what I mean let's see you know like I, I felt really good about it I feel like I feel like that um, you know, psychopathic where it is now is cool. You know, I got a lot of ideas for the future, you know, kind of where to direct it towards and stuff. Yeah. So, and uh, I've been talking to Joe and Billy about it a lot, you know. One of the things I like that we do here that uh, we didn't do the, the first time around is we have uh, company meetings, you know, mm -hmm. where we involve er every everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, every Monday and we involve everybody. Everybody sits around this gigantic table. Yes. And, uh, you know, maybe we show a shot of that or something. But, uh, you know, it's a gigantic table and we get everybody around there, including artists are all invited, you know what I'm saying, if they want to come and stuff and we just mm -hmm. like we brainstorm like yep. all the ideas and talk about everybody's and projects I think that's and everybody's really cool because on. even though every employee has their own personal jobs that they do mm. that's a time where everyone can put in input even if that's not your specific job that you're doing right people put in input and that's what makes not only a successful company but a family we really right. are a family here right, right, you know? no doubt. now the question on every Lowe's mind, of course, is will there be another Jump Steady album? Because not only are you an employee at Psychopathic and you do the damn thing every day, you also rap as Jump Steady. Will there be another album? I've been basically slowly working on it, you know. And you, of course, write and produce your albums. Yeah, like, like other people make the beats and stuff, but yeah, I write everything, come up with all the concepts, the yeah. song concepts. So you think you'll have... And the time and the well, yeah, energy that's, to do that. Oh yeah, uh, because I know a lot of a lot of um. Like I'm not working on it. Them. Like I'm I'm almost working on it. Like you know, as a labor of love, but as a hobby. You know, something that I do. Like I'll do a song here or there. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be a while, like maybe a year yeah. <laughs> before it was actually uh, done. But that's the that's the main but question. It's in the works. That's the main question people ask me, like at the yeah. gathering and stuff. Oh, are you doing something else? You know, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm like. I'm like kind of shy. You like that album? You know, you like that album? It's all right, you know? Yeah. Because I, I really like the Master of Flying Guillotine, you know, when I put that out. Yeah, I love that uh, album. Yeah, I thought it, I, I put a lot of love and heart. It took me about a year to do that. You know, I'm real <laughs> slow. Like, you know, look, with Joe and Joe, we pump shit out, like, you know, crazy quick, twisted, all them. Mm -hmm. You know, he can come in, write a song, and record it in one day. Like, it takes me a long time, you know? It's, it's not something that's like a, a natural right. ability of mine, you know? Uh, but I put a lot of love and heart into it, and, you know, it's got to be be done right and so you know and I, spend I will a lot say of time that something it, you know? that um, separates your music from everyone else's is that mm. it's really like 
reading an actual story. Like you get real deep, oh, yeah. and your right, writing yeah. is very, you know, you. Yeah, the story. The story the raps. The stories are. The story is, raps really are interesting. About yeah, them. they're they're one of the most uh, enjoyable things that I, that I like doing. Like in a song where you create a story. Like it it all comes back to my like role playing background, and I grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Right. So when I write a song, I like. To and write, for those of you who don't know, yeah. this is the creator of um, the Halls of Shangri La. Oh yeah, and more and more. And <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, when uh, you know when you when I create a song, I like to take the listener away. You know where they they can listen to the song and, and visualize you know what's going on in the song in their head, so that you know it, it creates like almost like a fantasy when they're when they're listening to it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's all inspired by my role playing background and stuff like that. What I enjoy to do, but yeah, so you know it, it'll probably take a while, but I definitely want to do another album. And I'm definitely working on it now, but it's just going to take a. That's a great minute, news. You know. I told your asses first. Right. It's coming. <laughs> right. Yeah. I it, said it first. It'll just be a minute <laughs> you know, before it comes out. You know. Um, I know when you came in to Psychopathic, um, one of your main focuses was to work on Psychopathic Radio. And I know we've had meetings about it and we're All talking right, so about it, the, but the what are your goals I, for Psychopathic Radio here, and when will it be up and running? I, I took over with Psychopathic Radio. So, you know, uh, you know, there, there was uh, <clears throat> DJ Fillin, he was, he was running it and, and doing a really good job, have been for many years, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, what up, Phelan? Right. <laughs> the, <laughs> the only problem with it is there was visually it was vi really unappealing, you know. And some of the things I noticed was they were running the show for a really long time, which you know it's it's it, it could get kind of heavy on your eyes, you know. Uh, yeah. It, it's kind of like uh, anything that's done like. There, there, there can be too much of a good thing, in other words, you know what I mean? And so, you know, and, and visually the show was shot in like a, a purple room and, and all this and that. So I decided, you know, I started talking to everybody, like, and we started formulating ideas from everybody of how to make this better. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I realized that it could be a lot better than what it is right now, you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah. I, I basically compiled all the ideas from everybody and even from just talking to Juggalos and stuff, what they want to see on the radio station and all that. And we formulated everybody's ideas into one you know master idea if you will uh, we want to make it into a visually a more entertaining show like mm -hmm. we want to take uh, the radio uh, the, the camera we're gonna have more cameras we're gonna have well uh, I don't want I don't want you to give too many secrets away well the, right the main now, thing the main thing radio but I just want to know uh, you know is that something that's gonna be coming after the new year and should we expect you know like a big bang of yeah. psychopathic radio yeah, it'll it'll probably be uh, it, it probably won't debut until a couple months into the new year, you know. Okay. Yeah, we don't really have a, a because release I know there's a lot it. of people yeah. missing their shows. We're still com I know we're still compiling all the equipment. Like we want to update all the equipment. So it's just gonna like be bigger, the, better, and. Well, the main thing with the show that <clears throat> my main vision of the show was to take the cameras outside of that studio a little bit more because it's like you know televised or filmed you know we want to visually for it to be more appealing you know okay. because people are sitting at home watching this so uh, there's gonna be like on-the-spot interviews like you know like like news reporter style people going out and doing interviews talking Can to I people do one? in their homes <laughs> or at a show and stuff like that you know and then also have a, a juggalo news segment That's some of the, the, the bigger ideas we want to have for the show you know okay um, and we're gonna still we're gonna do two shows we're gonna do uh, one show which will uh, simply be called the Juggalo Show, which mm -hmm. will which will showcase every Thursday, and that will be a psychopathic show for Juggalos by Juggalos. You know what I mean? So, and that show will have guests brought on and stuff like that, and 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 uh, things going on on that show, and then that show will be taken outside the studio a lot and stuff like that. Awesome. So. Yeah, and then we'll have the variety show, which will be on Tuesday, which will be all the shows that you're familiar with now. We'll still be running those shows yep. on Tuesday, you know. So, so the shows will be back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. All the shows will be there. Uh, it's just that we're yeah, just gonna change up the format. It's a I bigger, don't want you to say anymore. Because okay, I fine. Because but it's a it's a bigger production. Great. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it, that's overall. something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people have been wondering about your daughter, Samantha, and I know you get this question a lot. She's been on both of your albums, The Chaos Theory and The Master of the Flying Guillotine, and that was a long time ago. So how is she doing now, and does she have any plans on making her own album? 
Oh yeah. Because I know that a lot of people have that question. She's doing her, she's doing her thing as always. She's going to school right now. Like I've always been real close to Samantha, you know. And I was really happy to do those songs because for the rest of our lives, we can always reflect back on that it's something we did together, you know, which is yeah. awesome. And maybe we um, can even show a picture of our stairwell. There's a picture of you and her. Oh yeah. She is small as hell. Right, I don't yeah. know. It's like at a show at the gathering or something, yeah. and she you're holding her, and it's mm. so cute. Yeah. And now she's like a grown ass girl. The only <laughs> Samantha. Is showed <clears throat> some interest in doing uh, music again but that's never been her like main passion you know mm -hmm. and so it's something that like when she was real young I wanted to do those songs to try to uh, instill that spark into her yes but I've never pushed her to do one thing or the other you know what I mean like even though she has all these resources and she can easily mm -hmm. you know pursue a musical career if she wanted to I wanted her to like more like follow her heart and see what she wanted to do and so yeah she does have a, a, a slight love for music I mean she you know doing music or something like that but she's never really been that's never really been her true passion you know mm -hmm. so currently there's no projects lined up for Samantha even though I get asked that quite a bit too yeah. you know because I know uh, a lot of jugglers and and you know I've been asking me they, they're like man we thought Samantha was gonna be the first female psychopathic artist and she's or, gorgeous right I mean, oh yeah she's like a supermodel yeah. oh yeah, so. yeah. You know, which has caused <laughs> she me she should be the first juggalo supermodel artist right which has caused me uh, a lot of problems you know with knuckleheads <laughs> trying to come around and you right. know, whatever but uh yeah that's a it's another matter altogether but yeah well, I'm so i'm glad to hear she's doing well so I, currently, mean, I know she is but yeah currently right now there's wonder. nothing really slated for her to come out or you know she's not working on anything okay you know so okay all right all right and thank you very much for and doing that you're welcome. <laughs> you know? see you guys next time on sugar slam sideshow only on the app Dope. peace out